Welcome to Chart Rush. Today we're speedrunning the browser wars, the drama behind how you even got to this video. First, the internet is tiny, dial-up is screaming, and Netscape Navigator walks in like, I am the internet. Mosaic and Lynx are those two side characters at the bottom, just happy the page finally loaded. Then out of nowhere, a yellow bar appears. Internet Explorer has entered the chat. Microsoft's plan? Why convince people to download it, when we can just ship it with every computer? Genius or villain origin story? You decide. Watch that yellow bar grow. Every new PC. Hi, I come with Internet Explorer. Every confused user. Well, I guess this is my browser now. Meanwhile, Netscape is shrinking like your patience when a page loads one pixel at a time. And while all this chaos is happening, Mosaic and Lynx are still hanging on at the bottom of the chart like ancient fossils of the web. Internet Explorer keeps climbing. And by the end of 1997, Microsoft's browser finally snatches first place. Then, a tiny red-green circle pops up. Opera. Just 1% but acting like, I swear I'm faster, I have features, please love me. The chart basically tells it, you can sit in the corner for now. Now look at the top bar. Internet Explorer has turned into the final boss, grabbing almost the entire screen. That's not just market share, that's a dictatorship with a back button. At this point, opening the internet basically meant clicking the big blue E and praying the page would load before your patience ran out. If your homepage wasn't set to some random search engine you never asked for, you were one of the lucky ones. Web developers are out here suffering. Every line of code had to answer the same question. Does it work in Internet Explorer? If yes, congratulations, it'll probably work everywhere. If no, enjoy the next three hours of your life crying over broken layouts. But just when the blue E thinks it owns the universe, a tiny orange logo appears at the bottom. Firefox. Only 1%, but this little fox is quietly loading its updates and getting ready to start a revolution. Firefox shows up like the rebel friend. Hey, what if your browser didn't suck? Suddenly you've got tabs, pop-up blocking, extensions, themes. It feels like going from a Nokia brick to a smartphone overnight. Power users are sprinting to download it like, finally, freedom. Safari, on the other hand, walks in all calm and polished. I'm the default on your shiny new Mac. You didn't pick me, but let's be honest, you're still going to use me. It's smooth, minimal, and very, I drink overpriced coffee while browsing design blogs. On the chart, Firefox starts climbing fast, stealing chunks straight out of Internet Explorer's giant bar, one frustrated user at a time. Every time IE freezes or crashes, someone, somewhere, installs Firefox. Meanwhile, Safari is quietly stacking up share just by existing on every new Mac, building its own private Apple Kingdom on the side. So now the browser war isn't just one giant blue bar bullying everyone else. You've got Internet Explorer still hulking at the top, Firefox leading the rebellion with custom add-ons and nerd energy, and Safari holding it down for the Apple fans with smooth scrolling and clean vibes. And just when this three-way battle starts to heat up, another challenger is already loading in the background. And just when this three-way showdown is heating up, a new icon drops in like a meteor, a shiny colorful circle from Google. Google Chrome has entered the chat. At first, it's just a tiny bar at the bottom of the chart. Looks harmless, almost cute. But then people download it and go, wait, why is this so fast? One simple window, one address bar that's also a search bar. No extra junk, it just opens and works. The internet suddenly feels like it upgraded from laggy slideshow to instant teleport. Every time Internet Explorer freezes, someone escapes to Chrome or Firefox. Every time a site feels heavy, Safari flexes its smooth scrolling on a Mac. The bars on the graph begin shifting. Chrome keeps shooting upward. Firefox holds a strong, loyal fan base, and Safari slowly grows its own clean, Apple-only kingdom. Developers are now testing on all three. The old question, does it work in Internet Explorer, fades away. Now it's more like, does it run well in Chrome? Does it behave in Firefox? Does it look pretty in Safari? If the answer is yes to those three, you're safe. Chrome's bar doesn't just grow, it explodes. First, it rockets up into the second place, blasting past the smaller browsers and even overtaking Firefox on the chart. And it doesn't stop there, it keeps growing insanely fast, eyes locked on the real prize. Internet Explorer's number one spot. Chrome's bar keeps climbing and climbing, and then it finally happens, the chart flips. Around 2013, Google Chrome pushes past Internet Explorer and takes first place. The old blue E gets knocked off the throne, and the new king of the web is a colorful circle that started as a tiny bar at the bottom. Internet Explorer is now sliding down the chart like a retired final boss. It's still there, still hanging on, especially in offices and schools, but the momentum is gone. Most people are opening the internet through Chrome, while Firefox holds on to its loyal, privacy-loving fans, and Safari keeps growing quietly on every iPhone, iPad, and Mac that joins the party. By this point, the browser war looks completely different from how it started. Netscape, Mosaic, Lynx, all gone from the top stage. Internet Explorer, once untouchable, is fading. Chrome is dominating in first place, 
Firefox is the clever sidekick with superpowers, and Safari is the stylish Apple portal to the web. Same internet, new rulers, and you're probably watching this video through one of them right now. By this point, the browser war looks completely different from how it started. Netscape, Mosaic, Lynx, all gone from the top stage. Internet Explorer, once untouchable, is fading. Chrome is dominating in first place. Right under it you've got Safari sitting comfortably in second place like, I only live on Apple devices but I live very well, thanks. The blue bar is calm, classy, and powered by a whole army of iPhones and MacBooks. Behind them, UC Browser has its moment as the regional boss, big numbers on mobile in parts of Asia. A bit later it will start shrinking, like a trend you remember from 2017 but can't quite explain today. Firefox is sliding down the list, but it refuses to disappear. It's the OG hero of the mid-2000s, now rocking a smaller but very loyal fanbase of people who say words like open source, privacy, and I block every tracker, thanks. Then there's poor Internet Explorer. Its bar keeps getting thinner every year, until it's basically a historical Easter egg down at the bottom. But Microsoft isn't done. Edge Legacy shows up, and later the new Chromium Edge will start climbing with a fresh logo like, Hi, I'm not my dad, I promise. But I. On mobile, Samsung Internet quietly takes a solid slice. Every Galaxy phone is like, here, have a browser, and people actually use it. The old Android browser fades away, replaced by Chrome on Android, while tiny names like Yandex and KaiOS pop up to prove the chart truly is global. As we move into the 2020s, Firefox is still holding on to third place, with Samsung Internet right behind it and Edge Legacy slowly jogging up from the lower rows. It's like a three-way mid-table battle, orange, purple, and blue bars all huddled together, trying not to get kicked out of the top spots. Chrome is still this gigantic blue highway across the screen, Safari is cruising comfortably in second like a luxury lane for Apple users, and Firefox is hanging on to third place with all its strength. Below that, Samsung Internet, Opera, UC Browser and the first hints of the new edge are all squished together in tiny bars, fighting over a few percent like kids arguing about who got the bigger slice of pizza, but none of them are even close to touching the two monsters at the top. A little later, Edge finally muscles its way ahead of the orange fox and purple Samsung bar, and claims that third place podium. It's like Microsoft said, okay, forget everything we did with Internet Explorer, this is the one, and people actually believed it this time. Firefox slides back a bit but refuses to vanish, powered by that hardcore fanbase that would rather switch operating systems than switch browsers. Meanwhile, Chrome just keeps casually creeping upward every year, adding one or two more percentage points like it's collecting infinity stones. From the low 60s it climbs mid 60s and keeps going, this endless blue bar stretching further and further to the right like it's trying to escape your monitor. Safari stays locked in that high teen zone, super stable, powered by every new iPhone, iPad, and MacBook that gets unboxed. Every time someone says, sent for my iPhone, that blue safari bar basically gets another sip of fuel. By 2023 and 2024, the chart has basically settled. Chrome cruises in the mid-60s, Safari hovers just under 20%, and Edge has quietly slipped into third, around 4 5%. Firefox is slimmer than ever but still refuses to disappear, kept alive by privacy fans, devs, and everyone who hates switching browsers. Beneath them, the midfield is just a stack of skinny bars constantly trading tiny decimal points. By 2025 it feels less like a war and more like a map of kingdoms. Chrome at about 69% is the main road of the internet. Safari owns the premium Apple lane. Edge and Firefox share the middle ground, while Samsung Internet, Opera, UC Browser, Android, 360 Safe, QQ and others are thin neon stripes that still represent millions of users. From dial-up days and Netscape drama to Chrome basically owning the highway, the browser war turned into a story of giants, survivors, and tiny underdogs fighting over pixels. In the end, one thing stays the same. Whatever logo you tap to get online, that's your portal to this video. And right now it's busy watching Chart Rush. Don't leave the browser war yet. Click one of these videos on screen and keep the timeline rolling. If you enjoyed this one, hit subscribe. Drop a comment with your favorite browser and why your support helps Chart Rush make even crazier timelines.